Polygamy is a well-established part of South African marriage laws, and since our constitution has set the ideal of absolute gender equality as the principle that should underlie all other legislation, a new green paper, open for discussion until the end of June, has proposed ways to equalize marriage laws. Claire Mouisa investigates what's at stake for women. In my value system, honesty is what matters. Whether or not you have more than one sexual partner, it's about what you're honest about. Elizabeth Retief lives in Cape Town and is a therapist. She's also part of a growing number of South Africans who subscribe to the notion of polyamory. Polyamory is a form of consensual non-monogamy or ethical non-monogamy, depending both terms apply. And what this means for her is that she finds fulfillment in a loving, intimate relationship with two people simultaneously. The ethical component is essential. It's everyone knows what's happening. Everyone talks about what they are okay with and not okay with. Things are discussed and everything is above board. In addition, in polyamory, there are no prescriptive gender roles and no fixed relationship structures. It varies from relationship to relationship. I am involved with a woman who is married, so she lives with her husband, but I've also got uh, another partner who lives a couple of kilometers away and we see each other regularly. And you just, you know, just the same way that you manage two friendships, you manage two relationships. Within this context, there are women who have multiple male life partners. And because the polyamory community values privacy, this relationship model has not been the subject of public scrutiny. But this changed two weeks ago. The possibility of one woman having two husbands at the same time has become part of our national discourse recently. And there's even a name for it. It's called polyandry. This word pops up in a green paper on marriages gazetted on the 4th of May in which proposals for new marital legislation are published for discussion. However, the Green Paper and the term polyandry gained national prominence in a parliamentary debate on the backlog in DNA testing when Mr. Hanif Hendricks of the Al Jamaa party took the podium. And I'm very concerned about the provision in the Green Paper of the Marriage Act where women are allowed to take more than one husband. So you can imagine when a child is born, more DNA tests will be needed to determine who the father is. This was met with an angry response from Natasha Mazzoni, the chief whip of the DA. I would like you to refer what the um, last speaker, who I will not refer to as honorable, has just said and how insulting he has been to every woman in this country regarding uh, the rights of women to have multiple husbands. This altercation focused a lot of attention on the proposed new legislation and created quite a stir nationwide. Shadi Makhanu, a lecturer at the Witt School of Law, says the Green Paper was designed to address a very unsatisfactory situation in South African marital legislation. The fact that many cultural and religious marriages are not recognized is the main concern. Hindu marriages are not recognized under the Marriage Act. Islamic marriages are not recognized, as well as um, the Khoisan marriages, they're not recognized. And where marriages are not recognized, it is especially women who do not enjoy legal protection. In addition, the legislation that governs marriages in South Africa is very complex, consisting of many pieces of legislation. We have different legislation for different marriages. So um, I think the legislature right now is trying to harmonize all these types of marriages and put them under one legislation. So instead of having the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act, the Civil Union Act, the Marriage Act, which doesn't even cover all types of marriages that we have in South Africa, the legislature is trying to harmonize all of these types of marriages and put them under one legislation. And the proposals also aim to align marriage legislation with key principles in the Constitution, such as equality, dignity and non-discrimination. It also proposes the abolition of child marriages. Mazzoni supports this, especially the idea of equality when it comes to marital models. It is also my belief that is what is good for the goose is good for the gander.
So if we are going to allow for multiple wives in our country uh, in the case of men, then of course it is only fair to allow for multiple husbands should a woman want one. Uh, I don't think it's something that uh, we should allow culture or religious practices to stand in the way of. Our constitution must reign supreme and equality is what is at stake here. However, Hendricks finds this unacceptable because in Islam, God is seen as the initiator of marriage and only monogamy or polygamy, where a man is allowed more than one wife, is allowed in the sacred book, the Quran. My, my personal view is that green paper has been thrown in a waste paper basket. So we don't want parliament to vote on the tenets of our religion. And I'm sure many other religions wouldn't want a parliament to vote on their divine scriptures. And it seems the Muslim community is far from alone in their objection against polyandry. For many Christians, the idea of polyandry is totally unacceptable. The African Christian Democratic Party has come out strongly against polyandry and Bishop Maroti Mashashane of the National Christian Forum, an organization with a membership of 243 churches, is adamant that polyandry goes against their Christian beliefs. Our position is very straight and uh, very unshaken. Uh, we believe that God is the author of the institution called marriage. The principles are very simple. God is saying man and woman. So there's no other formula that uh, we are going to, to, to support, which is out, out of the scope of the word of God, the Bible that we believe on. He says the National Christian Forum has already submitted their objections to the proposed new legislation to parliament and will not allow the legislation to pass. Apart from religious concerns, objections against polyandry have also been raised by those who believe it goes against the grain of many traditional cultures. This past Tuesday, the ANC in KwaZulu-Natal released a statement voicing their rejection of polyandry. Musa Mseleku, reality television star and businessman who has four wives, agrees, but says that it is not because he denies the importance of equality. When we take more than one wife, it's not that because we want to show some kind of power or we want to cling to some kind of patriarchy. He says the notion of polyandry is un-African and as such jeopardizes cultural traditions and will bring confusion in terms of lineage and property. And it will cast age-old gender roles into disarray. I am of the opinion that women, I don't think they will be able to carry this responsibility. The gap between what lawmakers propose and what religious and cultural leaders will accept is wide, but Mazzoni is confident that it can be bridged. I think it's going to take a meeting between our cultural and religious leaders together with our lawmakers, and our constitution reigns supreme. So we need to look at the principles of our constitution that fundamentally form the principles of all our law. What are your thoughts about the green paper? Is it a move in the right direction? Um, I think it's absolutely a move in the right direction for its main purpose, which is to protect women who are currently stuck in traditional marriages without legal protections. It's not right at the moment that there is a legal avenue that gives people rights and advantages that's not available to everyone. And Retief says new legislation will also benefit the polyamorous community in South Africa. It's not like Everyone in the polyamorous community will rush out to get married. Many people are not interested in that at all. But there are people who would very much like to have that, that option. She also says ample research has shown that polyamory is not harmful to children and polyandry can work. Even the practicalities around things like jealousy is not a major issue in these types of relationships. It's just an uncomfortable emotion and jealousy you know, there's different things that lie behind jealousy and there are ways to work with jealousy. The debate the last few weeks has been quite intense, but one must remember that the Green Paper is a discussion document and members of the public have until the end of June to respond to the proposals. So it's not law, it's just that it's government trying to consult with the public as to what are you thinking on these things.
And Mahanu adds that in these deliberations on new marital legislation, one must be aware of the presuppositions that we are bringing to the table where it concerns something like polyandry. Are we imposing our Western practices into our religious practices or into our cultural practices? Those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves every time we try to develop either indigenous law or we try to develop um, religion to conform with um, the provisions of the Bill of Rights. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.